melodrama, and it concerns a couple of babies switched at birth. Now, this is not the first time that theme has been used in a movie, but I've not seen that theme melded with the devastating consequences of fascism, and that's what Parallel Mothers does. So you've got Janice, played by Penelope Cruz, named after Janice Joplin, highly regarded commercial photographer. And she's in a shoot with a forensic anthropologist called Arturo, played by Israel Allende, when she prevails upon him to help close a devastating chapter in her and the country's past. And that involves orchestrating a dig to find the remains of her great-grandfather. He was killed during the Spanish Civil War and his body was dumped. Janice and Arturo, who is married, begin a passionate relationship with Janice unexpectedly falling pregnant. She frees him of responsibility for the child when she decides to go ahead and have her, choosing to name her after her grandmother. In the birthing ward, she connects with a teenager called Anna, played by Milena Schmidt, who has had a less than ideal childhood. She fell pregnant in unenviable circumstances and the father could be any one of three boys. Anna's father and mother have hardly been responsible parents. The father dumped Anna on her actress mother, Teresa, and his former wife when he found out that Anna was pregnant. Teresa is not the kind of mum that Anna needs or has needed because her acting career has taken precedence over her daughter. Both Janice and Anna turn out to be caring and considerate single mothers whose lives intersect and collide in ways neither of them could have imagined. And Arturo continues to play a part in what unfolds. Now, while Parallel Mothers certainly contains a number of surprises, I reckon it unfortunately also signals the lion's share of its major punches. What do you think, Dave? Yeah, I agree. I, I think the film actually trips itself up with the two stories at times. It works perfectly for the first three quarters of the film, but I just felt that the ending didn't quite tie in the two stories in a way that didn't feel like it was tripping up the film. Having said that, though, the rest of the film I thought was absolutely magnificent. I thought the screenplay was fantastic. Y you can see what has happened a mile off. It's, it's pretty well signposted, but... The performances of the of the cast is just elevated by this amazing screenplay, and I love the suspense that's that comes through during this film. But yeah, I just thought that the last act didn't quite tie in the way that it should have. Yes, and I I mean in a sense, yes, they deal with the fascism, but bookending it rather than I suppose streaming it through it. I thought that that also. You know, I understand why they did that, but that could have been done a little bit better. That was my opinion. What about you, Greg? I haven't seen this one yet, Peter. Um, Alex has somebody to do this this weekend. No problems at all. And Peter? I disagree. Uh, I, I was very impressed by this film. Al Motivar has clearly uh, signposted that he is looking for reconciliation uh, between uh, Spain's difficult past and the stories of these two women who uh, uh, coincidentally gave birth on the same day and the interrelationship between the two. I thought the whole handling of the grief and tragedy of the past and how it's implicated in the relationship between these two women uh, and uh, what happens with their children, etc., is, I think, beautifully presented. Um, there is no comedy or anything in this film that is a, a typical of El Motivar's film. And what he has done is he's ended the film in such a way as to provide some sort of hope and reconciliation for the tragedies and difficulties that Spain has gone through since uh, 1936 and the Spanish Civil War. So I was extremely impressed by this film and the quality of the writing and the way the two stories dovetailed in, the history and the personal relationships dovetailed in so well by the end of the film. And and it was also great to see Rossi De Palma, who's uh, uh, always in uh, Almodovar films, playing a key dramatic role uh, in the film as well. So I, I was very impressed by Parallel Mothers. I, I think he's made better films than this. I don't think it was a bad film. I think it's a good film, but I don't think it's a great film. I mean, I thought, again, 
in terms of my line here, it was a bit too obvious and contrived. You could see what was coming. And the joy of the best movies is not knowing. And that, that still doesn't detract from the quality of the acting performances. I, I agree with Dave, admirably led by a very confident Penelope Cruz. And I thought Melina Schmidt displayed her range as her character grew through the movie from the journey that she, she had taken. Israel Allende has this quiet dignity in the guise of the respected archaeologist and Genesis love interest. And Aitana sanchez Guion, she plays the mother, Anna's mother. She sort of channels the diva who realises her shortcomings as the, the movie unfolds. The, the, um, I mentioned that the archaeological dig bookends the movie, but the bulk of the film is focused on the relationship, of course, between Janice and Anna. And I just thought that the famed writer and director, Pedro Moldova, could have employed more sophistication in the creation and execution of the script, Peter, in spite of what you've said. While it's designated or designed to, to pull at the heartstrings, which it certainly does at times, I just thought it lacked some subtlety. It, it's eminently watchable, but I didn't think it was best of breed. Any further thoughts, boys? Dave? No, I... I, I, I do agree with Peter. I think this is a really, really good film. I just wondered whether there could have been a different way to have have tied in what we saw as the ending for this film throughout the screenplay rather than just having it bookend. Um, it, I don't know, it, just from a screenwriting point of view, I just found it a little bit awkward, but I still I love the film, and I suggest for people out there, go and see this film because it is probably the, the best film in cinemas at the moment. Oh, wow, that's a big call. I disagree with that, too. OK, it's M-rated. It runs for two hours and three minutes. It's called Parallel Mothers. And I will start with the highest score based on commentary. Peter. I think this is uh, Motivar's, uh one of his best films, uh, and especially because he has gone for a dramatic arc and uh, historical perspective. Uh, I felt it was not contrived or anything like that. I, I really think it worked extremely well uh, and had a, a beautiful resolution. So it's a definite uh, 10 out of 10 from me. Oh, my golly. 10 out of 10? So yep. if it was up to you, this would win the Oscar. Is that what you're saying? Uh, it deserves to be part of the International Best o Picture Oscar nomination. OMG. It's really good that you started off being... You can be wrong. That's perfectly acceptable. Right, Dave. Look, I'm giving it 8 out of 10. Like I said, I did really, really enjoy the film and I loved the first three quarters of the film. Yeah, I'm giving it a 7 out of 10 for Parallel Mothers. Let's...